everyone. I'm John Lynn, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today. We're excited to bring you another in our series of interviews with top leaders in health IT. Today's guest is Scott Ovsel. He's president of Audacious Inquiry, a point-click care company. Welcome, Scott. Hey, John. Good to be uh, good to be with you today. Yeah, excited to talk about today's topic. I mean, I think it's uh, one of the hot topics, the thing that people really yeah. care about. Before we dive, before we go there, tell us a little bit about yourself and Audacious Inquiry. Sure, yeah. Um, so I was most recently the, the president at Audacious Inquiry. I, I've been at Audacious um, for nearly my entire professional career, uh, going back about 16 years. Um, I say most recently because just a couple of weeks ago, we actually finalized our combination with Point Click Care, uh, where I, along with the rest of the, the Audacious team, are going to continue our work, and, and we're really incredibly excited about it. And so you know, we're going to remain focused on the same work that we, we pursued as an independent business, which is one, uh, a focus on enabling safer care transitions and improving care coordination through real-time insights from clinical information. Uh, and two, uh, working closely with our federal partners like like ONC uh, and CDC on on um, a range of interoperability initiatives. Well, you are such an eclectic company that uh, you know. I think it's fascinating to, and you know, I'd love to dive in in, in a future interview about point click care and that combination. Yeah. But today, I want to talk about health equity and health disparities. Uh, you all released a, a really interesting ebook on that. We'll we'll link to that in the show notes and the article for this. But tell us what what is health equity and why does it matter? Yeah, well, first, I always think it helps to ensure we've got kind of like a common vocabulary when yeah, talking exactly. about the health equity, right? And so I think the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation definition is really good, finding health equity to mean that, you know, everyone is a fair and just opportunity to be as, as healthy as possible. Um, that in and of itself, I think, helps define why it's important. I think that the CDC has a similar definition, but also includes that, that you know, no one is disadvantaged from achieving that opportunity for health because of a social position or other socially determined circumstances, which, you know, that phrase is familiar, right? Yeah, and uh, is, more frequently sure. used social determinants of health in our world. Um, and so health equity is fundamentally important to create that type of opportunity for each individual where health disparities, right? The health differences linked to those, those social differences um, aren't, as, aren't as prevalent. Yeah, interesting. Are there some specific examples of health disparities maybe that you highlight in the book or things that you're interested in focused on? Yeah, I mean, at the highest level, you know, think about things like um, disproportionate disease burden, um, you know, think asthma or diabetes, um, overall mortality or life expectancy, basic access to care. Um, and if you were to look at these disparities closely, what you would see is different health outcomes tied to things like race and ethnicity and sexual orientation and gender identity and language. Um, and, you know, there are major macro level inputs to health disparities, like, like poverty and access to healthy foods and mm -hmm. the ability to attend school consistently and the access and affordability of medications and environmental hazards like poor air quality and, and so on. Uh, so the healthcare system has an important role in achieving health equity, but it, it's a much larger societal challenge that requires policy action beyond what HHS can do uh, independently. Well, I, I mean, to that point, it is a larger societal problem. You know, yeah. Yeah, I, personally, I think families and loss of families and, and some of those things are are, are yeah. a great example of that. And, you know, and the healthcare system is not going to solve many of those societal problems and challenges. But even to to a smaller extent, like health IT is a small subset of healthcare. Yeah. So, so yeah. how can health IT help to address this problem? Yeah, um, great question, right? Because, you know, I'm not an expert in health equity or health disparities, but I do have expertise in interoperability in health IT as do you. Yeah. And so we need to think about how to apply those areas where we do have a skill set and expertise against this large challenge, as do others in other industries that can bring different expertise to bear. So a couple points I might highlight. First, you know, ONC's work on interoperability standards to support social determinants of health. I think going all the way back to, to 2015, um, ONC's been working on standardized collection of SDOH data um, with the 2015 certification edition. And ONC currently requires the implementation of the, of the USCDI version one data collection mm -hmm. standards for, you know, race and ethnicity and language as part of that certification program. Um, last year, ONC released uh, the US CDI version two, which included additional data elements on things like sexual orientation and gender identity, 
um, and, and four other FCOH elements on food and, and housing and transportation and security. Um, and so that, that type of effort is incredibly important to get the baseline um, established. And I'll come back to that a little bit. The second, I would say, is uh, the Gravity Project, um, you know, which I'm sure you know and many others know is an HL7 accelerator focused on work to develop standards for sharing um, data related to social determinants of health. And, and Gravity's work will support how providers and community-based organizations and, and technology um, solution providers consistently share data by having uniform standards and implementation guides. Um, so I don't know if you know Evelyn Gallego and, and EMI and that group, but they've done a great work with, with uh, many others um, on, on gravity. It's interesting that you talk about it from a standards perspective. And, you know, I hear a lot of people here, yeah. USCDI, Gravity Project, and, you know, on the standard side, you see a lot of hope and a lot of, go. Uh, uh, you know, when I talk to a lot of other people, they're like, well, is it really making an impact? Like, yeah. give us a feel yeah. like, where are we at? Because, you know, I, I remember I, I heard someone say it takes a decade for a standard to get, you know, there and, and they use CCDA and then they use, you know, HL7 V2 and mm -hmm. then they use FIRE. Mm -hmm. And that fires finally at the decade, right? Is, are we going to yeah. go through that same decade evolution with STOH type stuff in the Gravity Project, or where are we at? Give us a feel like how close yeah. are we to like pay dirt, if you will, you know, to use a, a gold miner <laughs> analogy. Yeah, you know, you have to have this balance of hope and pragmatism, right? And, and kind of um, a belief that we should all have the urgency to be pushing harder and expect us to be there sooner. And the, the pragmatic reality that it might take longer than we hope. Um, and so there is a, a fundamental balance. I do think that, you know, we, there has been effort going back to 2015, as I said before, in the certification effort. So we aren't just a couple years yeah. in, even though, as you look at some of the bigger picture things, like, well, how are social services reimbursed and paid for? If we go to those kind of big macro sure. issues in the system, and you look at what some companies like Unite Us are doing, for example, or... Um, the old Aunt Bertha and the ability to actually, you know, network these types of solution providers and then start to think about how to put a payment infrastructure behind it. Like that stuff is happening. It's, it's relatively new and nascent, but we're not one year in, we're five and seven years in. Gotcha. And I think the foundational work on things like, like fire, right, and, and the standard in general, and the adoption of how to use those resources when combined with um, the right vocabularies and kind of normalized data sets to insert into those, you know, transactions. I think we're further along than most people think. I think it's, there's an equal amount of energy and attention that needs to be put onto health equity, right? So companies across the ecosystem are designing with it in mind first, instead of kind of retroactively trying to figure out, well, you know, how do we solve for this particular challenge and, and some, of, some sort of point solution that health equity is built in by design and that starts with standards. Um, and it starts with thinking about kind of product ideation and how you're gonna build some of those resources that ultimately are able to carry the uniform data sets that, that ONC and, and others are, are focused on. And is that how you see the health data and interoperation centers play into this? Is it, it's just providing that standardized way for any healthcare organization to get access to this important data? I think there are a lot of opportunities, but getting the data foundation right seems like a really worthy focus area, particularly for those kind of in our, in our domain of the world. So, you know, first consistently collecting standardized health equity data. Um, and it's, it sounds simple, but it's like, you know, some of our <laughs> early expertise were just in basic HL7 V2 data, right? ADPs. Mm -hmm. And ensuring that you get outbound data that's, that's accurate, that you're actually capturing race and ethnicity and gender data in a way that is usable, um, that doesn't happen broadly because the primary purpose of receiving, you know, the outbound V2 to begin with may not place value on those fields in the message. And so you might just kind of look by it. and then before you know it, you've got a thousand inbound ADP feeds with, you know, crappy race and ethnicity and language data. And, you know, you got to go back and, and, and work it all. Uh, and so kind of that's where kind of starting with the broader picture in mind really starts to to matter and having that baseline of connectivity and the ability to exchange standardized data elements really makes a big difference when you then want to apply it to something really important like you know how many patients that have received the covid vaccine in this particular community you know fit these criteria yeah 
I think that's what's interesting is now we at least have the data to understand the inequities and the disparities so we can start to address it. In many cases before, we were ignorant to, to the problem, I think. Yeah, and I, I think that, like the, again, going back to you know, what is possible quickly, like what infrastructure do we have in place today, both in terms of kind of the, the core systems that data is being entered into and consumed from, is it being captured in the first place, is it being captured mm-hmm. in a standardized way, and can it be exchanged in a standardized way? That's where so much of the work that the gravity is doing, you know, really matters, and the work that, that ONC is doing through USCDI really matters. But if you think that some very kind of practical points that like at the beginning of the pandemic in 2020, only half of the states in the country could report race and ethnicity data of who died from COVID, wow. right? And so like in those early days, it was really unclear kind of the, what, the, what the relative impact was when you wanted to look at data um, through that, that lens. Like same thing, first few months, if you're looking at vaccination rates, um, same underlying challenge of, of you know, um, whether it was COVID deaths or vaccination rates, um, what was the underlying race, ethnicity makeup of those that had received the vaccine? It wasn't easy to get to that. Um, it was still about half the people in the early months had that data tied to their vaccination information. Yeah, interesting. So how is Audacious inquiry, uh, inquiry approaching, you know, to address this problem? What are you doing to address it? What's your commitment? You know, how, how are you looking at working on this problem? Yeah, first, it's actually putting resources into trying to understand it, right? Like trying to actually engage in a meaningful way. The, the ebook is part of that, right? That's partially kind of us educating ourselves and then mm-hmm. sharing what we learn with the community we work in. So actually putting energy and effort into it, looking at our own solutions, the technologies. I mentioned ADT messages before, right? How do we make sure that we're starting to add in um, that we require that field and that we share that field and that we're normalizing it? And as USCDI V2 takes hold, that we're adopting you know, what the standards um, motivate or in some cases require through certification. Uh, and so looking at our own systems, which I've encouraged any company to do, um, because ultimately the, the, the kind of early steps you can take, particularly around the, the types of data that are transacted regularly today, um, may not be as heavy of a lift as, as you might think, but could have really important impacts down the line, both for kind of foreseen use cases, but also, you know, going back to, you know, early 2020, before we all knew what was coming, the ability to quickly react. Um, when that data becomes far, far more, more relevant. Yeah. Well, Scott, this is really interesting discussion. I think it's a discussion we're going to keep ongoing a conversation yeah, around so. health equity yeah. and oh, health yeah. disparities. So thanks so much. And thanks everyone for watching and listening. If you want to find more great healthcare IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareittoday.com or search for Healthcare IT Today on your favorite podcasting application. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott.